Hello everyone, welcome to HIM 225. In this lecture we're going to be covering chapter 19 in your textbook, which begins on page 455, and it covers chapter 12 in ICD-10, which is diseases of the skin and subcutaneous tissue. As we look at this category, we have um, an excludes note 2 at the beginning of this chapter, and then we have our section list. The guidelines that we have for this chapter actually deal with pressure ulcers, and that is category L89. So we're going to go ahead and look at this category and then look at these guidelines. I want you to notice that um, pressure ulcer, other terms are bed sore, decubitus ulcer, pressure area, pressure sore. You do have a mandatory instructional note here to code first any associated gangrene. And then we also have another excludes two note for other types of ulcers that a patient may have that you would also be adding the codes for. I want us to look at the structure of the codes in this category because this is consistent um, uh, this is a pretty consistent category. We'll have other categories like this throughout the um, classification system, but you'll notice this starts with pressure ulcer of elbow. And the first subcategory that we have here is an unspecified elbow. And you'll notice that as we go through these codes, the first code that we deal with is unstageable. Unstageable in the first guideline talks about, uh, your guideline talks about what an unstageable ulcer is. And uh, unstageable means that they cannot determine the stage of the pressure ulcer. It may be covered with a skin graft or a muscle graft or a scar tissue, but they cannot stage it. We then have pressure ulcers stages one, two, three, and four. These are the four stages that you will see documented. Physicians document pressure ulcers stages, but more typically, we use the documentation from the nursing staff. Um, they have to do a skin integrity assessment of the patient. And if there are any, is any skin breakdown or any ulcers, they document it. Most facilities actually have special forms that they use if a patient has a pressure ulcer. They have to monitor it and take care of it regularly. Many facilities have special nurses so that if a patient has a pressure ulcer, they have special nurses that actually come in and take care of that pressure ulcer to try and keep it from deteriorating. Uh, pressure one, um, uh, a stage one is the least serious, and in your textbook, it actually defines for you the depth of each of these stages. So a stage one is the least serious, and a stage four is actually the worst. And it, it will tell you that the, a pressure ulcer that has, has necrosis of soft tissues through to underlying muscle, tendon, bone, um, of an unspecified elbow. So <clears throat> the next code that we have is for um, pressure-induced deep tissue damage. And this is actually a new code. Uh, this guideline and these codes were published after your textbook was printed. And I'm going to show you that um, new guideline um, in just a moment. And then we have unspecified stage. Now, unstageable means that they can't determine it. Unspecified means that they didn't say it. They just didn't address it at all. So we've gone from unspecified elbow now to right elbow. And you can see that the seventh character numbering is consistent. Unstageable ends in a zero. Stage one ends in one. Stage two ends in a two, and so on and so forth. We have stage four, then we come down and we have deep tissue damage, and then we have unspecified. Then we have our left elbow, and again, that same series of codes. Then we have pressure ulcer of back, and we begin with unspecified part of back. We have all of those codes. Then the next thing we're going to see is right upper back. Same series of codes, left upper back. And then we see 
right lower back, and then left lower back. And this continues all the way through these codes. And you can see by this scroll bar that this is a long category over here. Um, <clears throat> So in the index, if we're looking for these codes, we're going to put in ulcer and then pressure. And again, you'll see the different body areas listed, but we can also specify the stage. So we can put in stage one, and then it will take us also to those codes. We can put in stage two. You see stage three, stage four, unspecified which means it's not documented, and then unstageable. So I want to take a look at the new guideline that we have, and it is, it came out in the uh, fourth quarter of 2019. And it tells us that uh, these um, codes have been that the category of L89 has been expanded to capture pressure induced deep tissue damage of various sites and then it lists those sites for us and they tell us that these are codes that were created with uh, to align with updates to the National Pressure Ulcer Advisory Panel pressure ulcer staging so Previously, and in your textbook, it tells you that deep tissue pressure ulcers are coded to unstageable, but that was actually changed, and uh, they did create these new codes to capture that specific information. Then it goes on to talk about pressure-induced deep tissue damage. Um, and describe that for you. And, and by the way, I actually got to this just by clicking on the coding clinic link at one of the codes that ends in a six. Now, if you're looking, you're trying to look up this deep tissue issue uh, injury, in the index, if you go to injury and then deep tissue, you, you'll find this entry and the one that we're reviewing is meaning pressure ulcer and then it tells you to see pressure ulcer unstageable by sight and if we actually go over here let's look at this so <clears throat> um, they have updated the index so now if you look at the index and look at injury, deep tissue, meaning pressure ulcer, it tells you to see ulcer pressure L89 with the final character of 6. So basically it's telling you to go to category L89, find the site, and choose the code with the, with the final character of dot 6. So let's look at... Um, your textbook. Uh, so when we're coding pressure ulcers, we have stages one through four, unstageable and unspecified. Um, an unstageable pressure ulcer means that they cannot determine it because it has maybe been covered over with a skin graft or with a muscle graft or just eschar. Um, <clears throat> when we're looking at document documentation for the pressure ulcer we use the provider documentation and the documentation by nursing we can use nursing documentation uh, for this now if there's ever a conflict if the physician documents one stage and nursing documents another then you're going to have to get a query from the physician to clarify that um, if patients are admitted with pressure ulcers documented as healed, so the patient had one, but now it's healed, we do not assign a code. They don't have one right now, so we're not going to assign a code. If the patient's admitted with a pressure ulcer documented as healing, then we're going to assign the the appropriate code based on the documentation. So maybe it was a stage four, 
um, two weeks ago and now it's a stage two, well, we would assign it as a stage two. And if it's ever, if the documentation is ever unclear about that, then you have to query the provider. Um, sometimes patients are admitted with pressure ulcers that evolve into another stage during the admission. So if the patient comes in and the pressure ulcer is at one stage and it progresses to a higher stage, then two separate codes should be assigned. One code for the site and stage of the ulcer on admission and the second code for the same ulcer site and the highest stage reported during the stay. Um, we also have guidelines for non-pressure chronic ulcers. If a patient is admitted with a non-pressure ulcer documented as healed, no code is assigned. If they're admitted with non-pressure ulcers documented as healing, then the non-pressure ulcer should be assigned to the appropriate non pressure ulcer code based on the documentation in the medical record. And if it's not provided, then um, you assign, you would assign appropriate code for unspecified severity. And if the documentation is unclear as to whether the patient has a new non-pressure ulcer or if the patient's being treated for a healing non-pressure ulcer, you have to query the provider. Now, if ulcers for ulcers that were present on admission but healed at the time of discharge, you assign a code for the site and the severity of the non-pressure ulcer at the time of admission. If a patient's admitted with a non-pressure ulcer that progresses to another severity level during the admission, um, if a patient's admitted to the hospital with a non-pressure ulcer of one severity and it progresses to a higher severity, then you need two different codes, one for the admission severity and then another one for the highest severity level that was reached during the stay. So let's go and look at these examples. Going back to page 456, let's look at this first example. The patient came in from a nursing home. The physician found a stage two ulcer on the sacrum. So in the index, we would be going to ulcer. Well, let me get back there. We would do ulcer pressure, and then we would do stage two, and we would do sacral area, L89.15. And in the tabular, we would go down and we would choose the code for stage two, so it would be at L89.152. In the next example, uh, patients being treated for pneumonia, uh, the physician notes that the patient was recently treated for a pressure ulcer of the left heel with a graft. The graft looks to be progressing as planned and the ulcer is unstageable. So again, we would go to ulcer, pressure, and then we would look at unstageable and we would choose heel and we would scroll down to um, and actually we're we know what heel this is. It was the left heel. So we would go down from right heel to left heel, and we would choose the unstageable code, L89.620. Um, in the next example, the patient has stage four pressure ulcers on both heels. So again, we would go to ulcer, pressure, and then we would choose stage four, heal, and then we would actually, in that category, we would assign two codes. We would assign one for the right heel and one for the left heel because there's not, there are no bilateral codes here. Uh, in the next example, the fourth example, um, in a progress note, the, patient, the physician documents that the patient has a pressure ulcer of the right heel with partial thickness skin loss. 
So in this example, we're trying to determine which stage is partial thickness skin loss. And we're right here, we're at the right heel, so let's go down to right heel and we're looking for partial thickness skin loss. We can see that that is included in the definition for stage two. L89.612 would be our code. Um, the next to the last example on this page. Um, in the discharge summary, the physician documents exacerbation of COPD, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and healed sacral decubitus. Well, this healed sacral decubitus is not coded because it's healed. In the next example in the discharge summary, the provider documents exacerbation of COPD, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and healing well, I, sacral decubitus. I think we have that one twice. Oh, no, it's a healing sacral decubitus. It's not healed, it's healing. So we don't know what stage that decubitus is. So it's unspecified. So we're at L89. Let's go over here. It's an unspecified um, decubitus. And it's sacral. So L89.15 and if we go down to 9, unspecified stage. Um, <clears throat> as you go through this chapter, um, it is pretty straightforward. If you have any questions about specific content, please uh, do let me know and I will be happy to um, cover those with you. Um, for your homework for chapter 19, you're completing the chapter review exercises odd 1 through 9. And for question number 1, there are two codes. This is an abscess of the right leg with cellulitis. So you need two codes for that. Number three is one code. Number five is one code. Number seven is three code. Three codes. This is a diabetic patient who has peripheral vascular disease and has a left foot ulcer with fat layer exposed. So you need to determine um, which of these. So this patient has a foot ulcer. This is not a pressure ulcer. So it is a non-pressure ulcer. And then for number nine, there are two codes, one diagnosis code and one procedure code. So they have a pilonidal cyst and it is excised. Now, going back to number seven, two of those codes are diabetic codes. It's diabetic peripheral vascular disease, and the left foot ulcer is considered to be um, a diabetic complication as well. And then the, the ulcer is as an ulcer with the fat layer exposed. Y'all, I'm going to apologize if this is a repetition. I have had trouble with my record feature all afternoon. I wanted to make sure that on number seven, there are two diabetic codes. One for the diabetic PVD, peripheral vascular disease, and one for the diabetic ulcer on the foot. And then this is a non-pressure ulcer with fat layer exposed. For number nine, you have a procedure. This is now for number nine. This procedure is an excision of the skin of the buttocks. 
the excision of the pilonidal cyst, excision of the skin of the buttocks, and the approach here is external because they're not they're not going into the skin. So um, uh, I may have given you incorrect information if this lecture was recording earlier, um, and I apologize for that confusion. Now in the workbook, you're answering scenarios one, three, and five. So let's look at number one. This is a 15-year-old who comes into the ER with itching and severe dermatitis. Uh, the history reveals that the patient was being treated for scabies. Exam reveals SOM and the patient is started on antibiotics. The patient has been treated with Elmite for the scabies, and that is the cause of the dermatitis. So as we look at this, what we have is a patient who has had a reaction to a medication that she was taking. So that's going to be your principal diagnosis. She has dermatitis due to a drug. Um, she also has serous otitis media. That's what SOM is, serous otitis media. She also has scabies. So you have to code the scabies. And then you're going to be applying um, a code that reflects that she has had an adverse reaction to that drug. So there are four codes for number one. Number three, we have a 33-year-old heroin addict who has cellulitis of the right toe caused by needle sticks. This patient has AIDS, so he's not HIV positive, he has AIDS, and he is homeless. So what we're, for this question, there are five codes. You're going to be coding the fact that this patient has cellulitis of that right great toe. This patient is a heroin addict. This patient has AIDS. This patient, this is, um, uh, we have, um, this patient is homeless, so you're also going to be coding the fact that he is homeless. And this abscess is from the needle stick, which is a hypodermic needle, and that is going to be a W code. So you're going to be going to the external cause tab to assign that code. Then let's look at number five. This is a 40-year-old female who comes in with hydradenitis suppurative of the right axillary area. The surgeon removes the sweat gland via an open approach. There are two codes for this. You're going to code the hydradenitis suppurative. And then when you code the procedure, the sweat gland is skin and axillary is upper arm. Now remember that when we're removing this sweat gland, this is not a resection. We're not removing all of the sweat glands. So the root operation for this is going to be an excision. That will conclude this lecture, this second lecture for chapter 19. Um, I did not ask you a question for this lecture, uh, so it actually will not be graded.